Welcome to Captured by Women, the all-women host show that dissects current affairs issues from the perspective of women. I am Nansata Yakubu, a development consultant, and I'm here with co-host Nancy Vokania, and I am an agribusiness development consultant, and I also double in fashion. I'm Sarah Asafweje, real estate developer and passionate sports enthusiast. We are sharing with you a recap of some of the issues we discussed last week. And it's a twin obligation to ensure that the pensions of contributors or members of his scheme are secured. So despite the fact that it, it, it ought to build and protect its members in terms of providing accommodation for them, it is also mandated to make sure that it has used the pension funds profitably. Do you think there's been a rise, or is it just that we are now having more reported cases of kidnapping? There's something about been... fraud. Once people can rationalize certain patterns of life, it, it energizes them to commit that particular kind of fraud. So you think like mm. with Sak the rise of Sakawa and all these No, things? because we have not been able to deal with the cases as it's supposed to be, then it becomes a justification for others yeah, to get molded. involved in the same kind of uh, crime. This show is brought to you by kind courtesy of GTP and Timashe in East Ligon. In this episode of Captured by Women, we will be discussing various issues, including... With Mother's Day just around the corner, we are asking who is a mother. It really depends on where you are in society as to what you think a mother or who a mother is. Could be someone who's given birth to their own child, someone who's looking after another child, or even someone who's adopted a child. Today's program, we will talk about Mother's Day, how it reflects on this exceptional group of women. We'll also be looking at issues surrounding the appointment of the special prosecutor, you know, to take care of corruption and abuse of office by government officials. Um, there was a lot of euphoria when he was appointed. Now the man is here and there's been inactivity. Where did all the action go? We'll get into it. There's been a very organic debate going on over the likely choice of a female for the high office of the Inspector General of Police. Do we have the women for the job? And should it matter which gender fills the gap? The spin is up next when we return. Welcome to The Spin. We are wading into the ongoing debate about a female IGP for the high office of the Inspector General of Police. Since 1958, when the first Ghanaian was appointed as IGP, we have had only men taking this office. There are several calls now as the current one is set to leave office this year. In the times of the late President Mills, there was Mrs. Elizabeth Mills Robertson, who acted for a very short period in that capacity. We are looking forward to see whether there will be the need, or indeed, there would be some sort of action on making a female a substantive IGP in Ghana. Ladies, this is a very interesting topic, and right. we want to be part of this debate. <laughs> what are your thoughts on, 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 on these issues that are arising? Hmm. I would like a female IGP. I've said it clear. <laughs> she can't be worse than some of the male IGPs we've had. Also, as you say, gender plays no role. Because mm -hmm. if you are from the school of thought that believes that men are physically stronger than women, the IGP is rarely, you, I, I stand to be corrected, hmm. ever required to use physical strength. Right. It's brain power, experience, expertise, which genders share equally. So for me, I don't think there's anything holding us back from having a female IGP, provided she's of the correct competence. Yeah, I, I agree with the, the competence issue. And much more so that modern policing is not about brute force. No. Everybody identifies that conflict skills, being able to communicate, and then in some cases, the, the, nat the very nature of the case. Mm. 
-hmm. It's much more where people would feel a female would do a better job. People speak something. to females when they are interrogating right. them or doing investigations, sometimes because of that and the mm. skills they bring uh, to the job. When we say competence, mm. you know, we have the competent women to join, to join the foray. I don't see why we are going you back see, and my, forth on my this. My worry here is that, I mean, it's fine. I, I, I cannot really stand for whether I should be a man or a woman. For me, gender is immaterial in this case. I feel as if we need somebody that's competent. With the way that this issue is going, it looks like people just are sort of looking for a sort of token. You know, they should just give it to a woman. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's beginning to look like a sort of feminist movement issue and, and it, there's never been a woman. For me, it's, it's really not that important. As no, far as I'm for concerned, me, for so me, so just for me it is important, and this is why it is important. important. So, and I'm joining yes. the feminist. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, no, I'm joining the. I, I am, and I'm joining the. Now, this is this is why it is important. Mm. It is important because, in as much as there are men at the right rank, because mm. also remember, within, within, the, within the police force, you must be at a certain rank right. to be as, considered. Uh, to be considered, as long as there are men at the, that rank to be considered, there are also women at that rank to be considered. Fair enough. Now knowing how jobs and working, uh, the working environment plays out here. Mm. I tell you what most of those women, their qualifications, mm. their job uh, uh, KPIs that they've had to go through to get to that level, they've probably done five times as much as some of their male colleagues to get to the same rank. And they are agree. very, I can very agree. qualified. I can agree so for you. me, why I would think that it is at this level mm. is we have competent women we have women who have been identified who can do it. So this is the time to make it. Instead of waiting till we don't, then you put somebody there and then the token, in, uh, well, the token the, thing, you know, I, I now reflects. I can agree we with have that, them but, now. But, but my, my worry is that this shouldn't be some sort of compensation to women. It shouldn't be a sort of cosmetic, decorative, aesthetic effect that we're trying to achieve here. At all. The no, women at all. who are in line, you know, from, from what we've heard, uh, we, we know that um, COP... Uh, uh, Vip Sanziri is in line and she could be and then we also have uh, uh, the boss of the CID uh, Mami Atiwa Adodankwa Is she senior enough? She's senior enough. Apparently, she's senior enough. you don't even need to be senior enough. She, we, 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 we've been told that you, they can go, they, they can actually go, go below lower. this rank, their yeah, ranks. To the even, COP? Yes, yeah, really? they can go beyond, they can go beyond COP. Anyway. They can go below. We've been educated on I, enough. I, I, I and it's, apparently, it's, other, we've had uh, IGPs who are not COPs. Yes. 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 We yes. had IGPs. Yes. And, and, and I think in the past, something like that. We've had IGPs who are not COPs. For me, the important thing is that, let's see the candidates. If some are women, some are men, fine. But we should not not choose a woman because of prejudices that exist in society and within the That's Ghana police. That's my worry. No, Let my the worry. most competent person win. And if it happens to be a woman, yeah. then we throw our weight behind exactly. that decision. I yes. think we should support anybody that's made the I think we should support Regardless of whether it's a man. Because yeah, I think so. Too. Why, why <laughs> I think so is because if you, if you even hear the way... People even within the police force, some retired and all that, yes. are already Most engaging the, the, the public on this <laughs> issue. This is quite disheartening. Yes. You know, it's quite disheartening. So I'm, I'm looking at the instance where if we leave it, like Nancy saying, the clamoring, the calling for, yeah. sometimes women need to put their best foot forward. And I think that's why a lot of people are getting on this uh, uh, debate. To, to see I, where it will lead. I also think lead. that, I mean, the, the women that are involved or are in line for this or are prospects for this position shouldn't just sit down and, 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 and assume that everything may be based on merit and so on and so forth. I think that if the men are pushing and lobbying and so on, I think they should also get into it. And, you oh, know, I'm sure, they are, they have I'm to sure do. any woman who's in mm. line is lobbying. I would be surprised if they're not lobbying. But, but, but it's, 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 it's really sad. Public, the court of public opinion shouldn't be brought right. into play. It, at all. It's sad that at you know, the, some of these retired uh, uh, police officers, actually quite uh, big men, people with high ranks, you know, said a uh, few things that were pretty um, yeah, uh, the annoying. Patriarchy. And, and, yeah, it's the it's, 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 and they are speaking, they are speaking their minds of a lot of people, but we believe we've been socialized in a way that there's a lot of misogyny against women. Mm. Immediately you put a woman for office, then there are a lot of but ifs, what, how, yeah. when, when sometimes her qualification and what she's achieved is even not a quarter of her competitor. Right. But just by gender, they will say, oh, she would come on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. She's going to be looking after children more. It is because the men have not been taking more care of the children. That's no. why the women do that's, that. That's, 
<laughs> so so if they the weren't put it. in their bit, that would mean that it is out. We have the New Zealand president mm. who has had a baby in yes. fact. She has she is commander of the armed forces. Yeah. She is a police, what what <laughs> she has a husband and she still found time to produce to a baby. Produce, what yeah. else can you yeah. think that yeah. everything yeah. 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 And I even it. want so to hear women can like, do everything. I like how the role comes with heavy responsibility and intense pressure and it requires someone who can firmly put their foot down and 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 and, 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 and some people simply don't believe that a woman can actually do this and, and apparently this is not the time this is not the right time it will never be the time there's we never have the time. you have to start now you start now you have to start now so we are hoping that this debate will go on and and as the the current idp prepares to leave office mm. uh, we'll see how uh, it comes out, but in any case, well, we, we are throwing our weight behind a woman, and yeah, we hope I'm the president hoping it's, will be I'm hoping it's behind a, a competent yeah, woman. Yeah, yes, competent yes. Woman. and I'm exactly. hoping that her tenure will open trying. doors for other women to also, you know, get the opportunity to serve in the highest oh, office exactly. of, of, of police service. Coming up next on Captured by Women, we discuss Mother's Day. <laughs> is a mother? That depends on what society defines as motherhood. In a lot of societies, it's only a woman who has given birth to a child from her own body, but there are also a lot of other women who have looked after other people's children for many, many years, and they are not considered mothers. Today, we are making a special exception to our male guest rule by having the lovely former Deputy Minister of Tourism, Jifa Gomashi, here to join us. Thank you, Sarah. So, Jifa, <laughs> this age-old question of who is a mother, yes. I have my own views on it, but I'd like to hear what your views are on who constitutes a mother. Well, thank you very much. I think that um, it's both biological and it's also a social construct of what motherhood is and what womanhood is and all of that. Um, on my own account, I don't think that it's only the one who has carried a child to term uh, or brought a child out of her own body who is a mother. I think a mother is anyone who nurtures, cares for um, another one is a mother to me. And it could be a man, it could be a woman. Mm. Yes? You know, Jifa, when, when I, I, for my generation and when we're growing up, uh, we never celebrated Mother's Day. Mm. I mean, this is quite recent as far as... Yes, it is. You know, I, I think so. Yes. yes. Okay. And for me, the focus has been to maybe give your mother a gift or somebody that you see as a mother to you a gift or... But you, don't you think that, you know, that the focus should shift to something else? I mean, it's nice to be appreciated. People tend to do more and are motivated to do more when they're appreciated. But do you not think that Mother's Day should focus on other things such as, you know, uh, you know getting more for women? let's say, from the workplace, oh. things like longer maternity leaves, things like having nurseries at the workplace. What, what's your take on that? I think it should be all of that. I don't think that we should separate it and make it only about the one who brought you into the world, mm. but also to include the, the strides that women have made from women in, uh, women in development, women and development, gender and development, all that journey. Everything we have done has been about that. Um, it is when we try to separate that, I think we lose track of where we are going. Our issues have not been only about celebrating the fact that we are yeah. nurturers or we are the ones who give birth. Mm. Our issues have been the recognition of everything a woman does. Mm. The, uh, for me, we are celebrating all of that. Um, I recall that um, in probably 1983 or four. Mm. When I met Ifwa Sutherland, Ifwa Sutherland, not Isi, years ago, many, many, many so. years ago, mm. when I met her, and I heard she, she had been to university and she still dressed like my mother, for me, she was worthy of a celebration. Why she is opened, that? Because she opened a door mm. that I didn't think was there. She made me realize that you could, you could, you could be... Uh, Dr. Ifwa Sutherland right. and so dressed like mama who didn't make it to university but was a teacher. My mother was a teacher. Mm. But she made me realize also that 
you can you can dress like that and be the author of a book. Right. Yes. Right. That for me is a celebration. Yes. Absolutely. And 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 people like that. I mean, if you, if you meet a woman like that as a mm -hmm. child, um, she does for you what perhaps your mother could not have done for you. So if you, if you want to celebrate women mm -hmm. or the mothers in your life, she should be one of them. Yeah. So yeah. I, don't, I, I agree with you. We yeah. shouldn't separate it. It should be we all should, of that. Should, we should, we should celebrate There's also that. A, a conversation about accelerating uh, the Mother's Day onto another level. For years, as Nancy said, growing up, we didn't, we didn't celebrate it. Yeah. Then it started, we you know, at the religious groups mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. then with society. I think that's how it And now it's, it's becoming it? a national... It's commercial. It's commer yes, it was it's commercial. It started commercially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the churches uh, have kind of... Because Madrid Sunday, anyway, it's usually Sunday. Mm. Most oh, of the day. It's Madrid. Right. Yeah, that's why Sunday. it's Madrid yeah. Sunday. So the churches, in a way, we do the prayer bit part. Mm. And then the eating part is uh, <laughs> the, the, the way we do later on. But we, we are having a conversation where we are thinking there needs to be an accelerated construction of what it means to celebrate Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at, you are formerly from tourism. Mm -hmm. If it's something Ministry of Tourism can, what are some of the proposals you think they can use to propel something like that? Looking at development aspects, social aspects, you mm -hmm. know, things not just about giving a gift, right. as Nancy was saying, but something much more coordinated. From, from the states? Yeah. Huh. I don't know if uh, I've considered this in my, in my, uh, in tourism, mm. but I've looked at it in creative arts. Okay. And the, the ministry was tourism, culture, and creative arts. Yeah. In creative arts because um, I grew up in the sector um, seeing women not being appreciated and given the, the place of honor mm. in the sector. And, um, I, I know that there were many people in my generation who, whose parents frowned on the fact that you were going to be an actress mm -hmm. and you were going to be a dancer oh, and you were going to be a musician. Really? You're going to be a musician? You're going to be an actress? <laughs> the assumption of loose moral. Absolutely. Yeah. Because of that. Exactly. Of, of, those of misconceptions. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think that we, we need to learn to celebrate the little strides mm. that we have made. Mm. Um, in today's Ghana, I think that the recognition and the premium that is placed on the, the, the same um, spaces mm. have changed for the better. And um, one would hope that, um, you know, look, I, I, I've had this conversation on other platforms, but perhaps mm. it's a good place to have it too. Mm. I, I've asked myself why I don't see um, Na Manua um, Asabia Kropa mm. performing at high level events like their male counterparts. Mm. Why don't they? Why, why, why are they not so celebrated? Well, it's two things. It's either they're not invited or they themselves are unavailable. They're very available. I think they're they available. They're just not invited. They're, they're, yeah. mm. Asabia Kropa was at a New York benefit function and Barack I, I Obama, was, you remember, picked her out and was well enamored by her head gear and all that. <laughs> That's but in America, yeah. It was big news wow. when he was doing his yeah. the, okay. the second turn of That's his last campaign. The, she she, so she that, very much right. ties it. I'm, it's yeah. like asking me yeah. if the tortoise so goes <laughs> with the <this> child. <laughs> so those are. So I think they are not invited. Like the late uh, one is channeling. Yes, channeling. yes. yes. My, uh, the late uh, Rama Bedu. Mm. Yes, there was a yes. Mogo Mogo concert. Yes, mm. uh, and and. It was one of the few things I, I let mm. myself enjoy. So, and so, she, she brought the roof down. So it's true. Yeah. I want to say yeah. that uh, in, in recognition of that and, and having myself written on the shoulders of these women, mm. we, we started something we call the Female Legends Night. And uh, we wanted to celebrate the, the female legends in the sector. Sorry, when you say we, we are the ministry. We, as in, as in Jifa Gumashi and her, her people. Okay. <laughs> okay. So would it so, be a good oh, idea that's... to maybe hold that on a Mother's Day? Oh, for, uh, yeah. brilliant idea. Yes. Yeah. Or brilliant as part idea. of activities yes. Yes. in Mother's Day. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But yes. what I wanted to talk about is that what we don't often talk about is that the women in society who are not recognized on Mother's Day, even though they've been doing the, the, work, the of work of raising mothers. other people's children right. through no fault of their own or through their right. own choice. Right. Because I, I do know, I'm sure we all know some women who have no children. And on mm -hmm. that day, I think, if putting myself in their shoes, yeah. I would probably feel very down and low if I wasn't recognized in any way. Yeah, but I do feel left out of a lot of things too. Yeah. 
-hmm. So it's not a big deal. It but is a big deal, but <laughs> it's not the only big deal. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, the, the, in every space, there's someone who is left out of something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it right, yeah. but, but in, it doesn't make it an exception. But, but in so our culture, the way we, we cherish women oh. who have given birth. Yeah. I don't like, like, yeah. they, I don't they, like they walk on we water. Mean. We are mean to a very <laughs> large... Oh, yeah. We are mean. Oh, we are merciless. <laughs> but <laughs> ironically, we, ironically mm. we also have women who feel patronized when they are said mothers because they actually Do feel they? that... Yeah, 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 yeah. Be, you be. don't have children and so you don't think you are a mother. Mm. You are a woman, all right. You don't have children. Yeah. And you think that you are being patronized when you are told how oh, happy mommy's day. And you will see people that are older than you tell, calling you no, mommy. That is what I'm that saying. Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> older than you will be telling you, oh, mommy, you mommy. Want... And you're like, you, know, you could be my never, father. Just yeah. because I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. why is my biology a determinant or why? Yeah. So people, or there's a construct where so you, you are put into this. Be a choice. Mother, it, 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 it is a choice for a lot of people. It is a choice. And some people do, it overtakes them. Yeah. So, yeah. it's, it's a way to mm. play on your emotions, really. Mm. When grown men who are perhaps <laughs> your peers or your fathers, say, yeah, and say, "Mommy, <laughs> oh, ma, ma, oh, ma. ma, you know, look, oh, no. Aunt oh, Hillary, no. bless your heart, wherever you are, Hillary, <laughs> Medema, she say, would you say poppy? Yes, <laughs> you know. If, I mean, really. Yes, but yes, but that's yes. just to play on your emotions and yes. get you to. To tone down or yes. to allow Sometimes something. It's condescending. It is. Yes. It is to a very large extent. But I mean, what Sarah? Um, back to your your <laughs> question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it can be. Look, I've used the word, and I'm I'm saying it again. We can be merciless, and we can be ruthless, yes. yeah. and we can be wicked and mean to people. Yes. Mm. Even even if you have, if you don't have, it's bad. If you have one, yeah. it's bad. Why if you have one? one here and one at, from some other it's place, still bad. I it's mean, bad. We, we are if you beating... have one or two without a, a, a without male a spouse, a spouse is bad. Yeah. So we are beating. We are beating. It's a no win. It's just tiresome. Yeah. It's incredible yeah. why, how we do these things. But the thing is that there, there are some people that are not mothers. You know, and you know, like Sarah said, they've yes. been doing the work of yes. mothering, maybe yes. their siblings' children, yes. or so on and so forth. But psychologically, they feel down or they feel bad. So even though maybe those children around them are treating them as a mum, they themselves yeah. are unable There's to. There's an internal accept, conflict that goes on. You know, yeah, because you, you sometimes they are only treating you as a mom as long as you pick up the bills. When uh, they get to uh, a, a, a state where they have completed school and they can take care of their, but their yeah. biological parents will appear and say, "Oh, that's my son. He went oh, to you." But we have people who have uh, you know, even your biological children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can treat you but like I, that I, so I wanted that. to talk about the other side. Women I, I who have children that they give if, away if I, and don't want them. We've what about those times? So if I so we have to pick this up at another. Okay, let's finish with you. Add your point and then we'll wrap up. I was just saying that we're friends on Facebook and you yeah. see that uh, on the 3rd of May was uh, my nephew's birthday mm. and I put his picture then I wrote there this is the one who didn't know which of us was his mother yes oh that's wonderful there's six girls we are six girls and he's a product of one of my sisters mm. but growing up anybody who picks a bag and is working out he thinks that <laughs> that's his mother going and so I think that it's the environment it's a, a, a social construct. Yes. It's also biology and it's also yeah. it's culture nice. and heritage and all of that. But if we, are, we, if we say we want to be celebrating Mother's Day, yeah. we need to be breaking some of these barriers and, and bringing th this kind of uh, yes. thing okay. down. But hey, happy Mother's Day happy to happy everybody. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> yes, all of us who, who look out for other people's children are all mothers. Right. And so we right. should also celebrate. It's been wonderful being yeah. here. So, Jifa, thank you so thank much you. for joining us today. It was thank you. very nice to have yeah, a woman in the seat yes, for once. Yes, yes. <laughs> and yay, I'm the one who made it here. Yes, <laughs> normally it's the men that get captured. So. Yes, yes, yes. You thank know, you. You're a first. So, what is your assessment of the office of the special prosecutor? Do you think that corruption and abuse of office in government has lessened because of the establishment of this great office? More on this when we come back. You've been captured.
welcome back to the show. This is Captured by Women. And um, we're still on the issue of the special prosecutor. It's been just over a year since he got appointed by the president to take care of corruption and abuse of office by people in service. After one year and a couple of months, what has happened to the special prosecutor's office? We have seen total inactivity. Do you think that Ghanaians can endure the amount of inactivity and what's going to happen afterwards? With us to discuss this very pertinent issue is Mr. Vitus Azim. He's the former executive director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative. Welcome, sir. And thank you for joining us in Captured by Women. Thank you. All right, sir. So um, we'll just go straight to the point here. Okay. The special prosecutor has been in office for, what, almost two years, if, if I get my facts right. Okay. And um, not a single case. Not one single case of alleged corruption has been successfully prosecuted. Do you think <laughs> that the public, you know, the, the population of this country will survive or endure another year of complete total inactivity from our special prosecutor? Well, the special prosecutor has not been in office for two years. He's, <laughs> he's been in office for just about one year and a few months. All right, we stand corrected. Yes, it's okay. and then, of course, it's not the individual that has been appointed that can actually get the work at the office going. Right. He was appointed in February 2018. His deputy came around May 2018. The board was appointed in July 2018. Mm. Half of 2018 was gone. Right. And he needs resources to work. There was no budget for the office in 2018. Mm. Even though the law was passed in 2017, November 2017, and it was expected that there would have been budgetary provision for the office mm. for 2018, there was no provision. So he was disappointed, maybe given a salary, but mm. nothing, nothing to work with. So that's one. Yeah, I think there was something in the news cycles regarding the fact that he had no resources to work with. At yes. some point, did he have an office? Well, when he, he started, finally got an office. Finally, he got an office, but it needed some work on. He needed to work on the office. So that is one thing. Mm. But even if he got an office, he needed the staff to work yes. with. As an investigator and a prosecutor, he needs lawyers, he needs investigators, he needs supporting staff. And at one stage, he was even, they were even looking for voluntary civil servants to come and help because he didn't have money to pay his staff. So after he probably settled towards the end of 2018, mm -hmm. then one would have expected that he would start serious work in 2019. And of course, as an investigative body, you have to receive complaints. Of course. If you don't receive complaints, you don't start, you, you, don't have, you have nothing to investigate. Mm. And then when you receive complaints, you have to look at them, do preliminary investigation to find out whether there is any basis for those complaints before you launch, serious, launch into serious investigations. Okay, so, so not to cut you short. So now we're, 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 it's comfortable to say that he has everything he needs. He has a deputy. He has backing law from he, the he legislature. Has he, has he has a board. board. He has office space. He has a team of lawyers. He has a team of investigators. Are we saying that he's set now as we speak? Well, he has something to work with. But I don't know the number of lawyers he has. I don't know the number of investigators he has. Mm. So I wouldn't say that he has enough to start working. But at least he should have something to start with. But Mr. Azim, uh, there seems to be the notion that this, uh, I have no tools of trade to work with, is mm -hmm. just uh, uh, delay tactics on the part of Mr. Amidu not to undertake work. Because when he didn't even have an office and was not appointed in a way, he ascribed some powers of uh, some kind citizen of uh, special, vigilante. yes, that made it, we led him to be called citizen vigilante. So what is it within that the law of this office that would restrict him from behaving like he used to behave? Yeah. You know, when he, he, he was a, a vanguard, yeah. How would, how would that Mr. work? Mr. Amidu was acting or behaving as an individual. Mm. I can decide to go today if I have the resources to go and uh, take up a case in court. Mm. But now he's appointed by law to perform a certain role. Even if he has the money, he's not required to use his own resources to, go, to do that. So that's one thing. Mm. So I don't think that that should be an issue. In any case, it is not... Mr. Uh, the Office of Special Prosecutor alone has these problems. If you have been doing budget work in this country, you know that even if the budget is approved in December of the, pre the, the previous yes. year, yeah. it takes at least three months right. and sometimes more 
some institutions that still haven't got resources released to them for the 2019 so budget. So this product. goes back to the old issue of bureaucracy and, yes. and red tape. And so, so it's not just get, be, say in the budget that oh, you've been given 180,000 CDs or is it million CDs mm -hmm. to start with. Sarah was asking something about open and shut cases. Yes, I'm saying that something you talked about complaints. He needs mm -hmm. complaints. I personally find it hard to believe that there aren't some existing complaints right. that should have been looked into and we were promised that when the special prosecutor came, these are the kind of cases he would be looking into. So we are not now waiting for just fresh complaints. Let's go back to the old ones that the opposition was so loud about at their time mm -hmm. that we know, what we suspect, wrongdoing has taken place. Can't he start with those? If, for example, a complaint was made to the Commission on Human Rights and Treaty Justice, yes. mm. or a complaint was made to IOKO, yeah. the Office of Special Prosecutor cannot just go and take up those complaints and start investigating. In fact, there are restrictions. If a case is already before court, none of those institutions can just go and take up that matter and start investigating. And the, people so and the people decided that they wanted particular institutions to investigate and send their complaints there. Mm. So how can the special prosecutor just say, oh, because I've now been appointed, I am going to take all these cases and investigate, when he even doesn't have the resources? But at the same time, I understand what you're saying, but I also haven't heard anywhere an announcement that bring your complaint to the special prosecutor. Oh, but you have heard that people have sent no, complaints. I've, I've heard he's been there, but I don't know. When the law was passed, it was clear the president in, in, in the swearing him in said a lot, made, made a lot of statements. Mm -hmm. And when he was also swearing in the deputy, so at least Ghanaians are aware that the the office has been established and that if you have complaints, you can go up. So as complaints. a citizen, I can walk there and yes. make a complaint. Yes, you can okay. walk there and make a complaint. Well, now so, I know. So, yes. Mr. Azim, now that um, he's on the brink of uh, accelerating work in, in his office, so to mm -hmm. speak. We have heard from the board chair that they are going to publish a list uh, very soon of cases. Yeah. And uh, some of us are surprised because when they say a list, you don't know, is it a list of cases they are going to undertake, oh, they mm -hmm. are already undertaking? And then uh, there also seems to be a notion that we should have some form of uh, camera. You know how the public accounts <laughs> committee <laughs> does their People are expecting yeah. that yeah, when the special prosecutor it will be something like yeah. that where we can all watch yeah. and see. Is, is that the case? Is that how it's going to happen? Well, let me say that I don't work with the office of special <laughs> prosecutor. <laughs> but the law that set up the office requires that every three months the special prosecutor should report right. to Ghanaians right. the complaints that he has received or she has received and what he has done or, or not done so far. Mm. And has that been done? And I even believe that he should add if some monies have been recovered as a result of his investigation. But not every case that needs prosecution. Mm. If there are not serious cases and involve monies that you can easily recover, you might use it as your discretion to say, that, look, I'll recover these monies and not go to, co to court, mm. especially if people are willing to settle. So the law requires that he or she should report this is every three months mm -hmm. so that we know that work is actually going on. Mm. Unfortunately, that has not yet been done. But the, the, the board chair had to say this because, or was compelled to say this because, people were asking, what is Madame Miri doing? They're even making it look like, is that the individual person that is supposed to be working, not the office? Exactly. So you, you, are, you are compelled to come out and say something, to explain to Ghanaians that we are doing something, we'll soon come out with the list. Now, I don't know the nature of that list, but at least, Ghanaians want to hear. The expectations are very high. The expectations and are very high. And people are getting very impatient. Yes. I mean, so, I think it's because of his character also as a person before he became, I mean, yes. there's a lot of expectation. When he was appointed, and the office there itself, was so much excitement. Yes. There, there's oh, a lot of encouragement. Things are going to be fine. But the special, office of the special prosecutor can, and Madame Mead cannot be the panacea to corruption in this country. Well, Similar institutions no, have been set. But he can be a deterrent. Yes. He can serve as a deterrent, yes. which is also very But he important. needs other people to help. Okay, not, not to, to, to cut you there, but I mean, the idea we get is that he's, he works autonomously. Yes, he's supposed to work autonomously. Yes, but, but it looks as if because of how, you know, we're not really seeing anything coming out of there, people want to get involved and say, hey, we need to see this, we need, we need to see you do something. But anyway, we have a text uh, from one of our viewers. Um, this is uh, Imani Africa Vice President. Mr. Kofi Bentel, he feels very disappointed that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is yet to act on a petition 
regarding the scandal that involved bulk oil storage and transportation company hmm. Post and two other private firms. He goes on to say, uh, let's say, says the sluggish speed with which the special prosecutor is handling the request to investigate the sale of some 1.8 million off-spec fuel to move in Pina and Zup oil is worrying. Very worrying. So ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is worrying. Views on this one? It is worrying and the committee was set up. The committee has come out with this report saying that they should cover the cost of the, the, the lost uh, mm. oil and the monies that were uh, paid to move Pina by uh, Zup oil mm. to the value of, I think, 471,000 liters of spec. Off. And so it's clear that this man is old. You don't even need to investigate because there's already a committee's report yeah, that these are can, the kind of open and shut cases. Open and shut cases. Yes. Yeah. So if, if they are not paying, then it's a different matter. But mm. they haven't challenged, I don't think, I've, I've not heard that they've challenged that, that amount of money that is involved. Will this but be also the management, also the management of uh, BOST. Yes. has been asked by the committee to do further investigation into other things surrounding this, mm. uh, this situation. Mm. So everything is spelled out. I don't see why they should even be waiting for the special prosecutor to do that. Mm -hmm. In any case, do we know the number of cases pending before the Office of Special Prosecutor? No, we have no idea. We so, have so, so, you know, we so, so why should we, or we, why should we be complaining about just this particular one? Because one, <laughs> one point five billion cities is involved. Yeah. It's one point five we billion. Don't know. You know, the speculation, know. the why speculation not? is rife because yeah. we don't know. Yes. And uh, in, in anti-corruption and trying to get, we think information should be made available. Yes. You know, immediately they bring the case. We don't mind, because sometimes if somebody brings the case, approaches the office to investigate, mm -hmm. by making that information itself public, it's going to mean you are going to get more people encouraged right. to even come forward. We don't hear that. And this first list, we are all awaiting eagerly, but we don't know whether it's just a list to announce that these are the uh, people who approach us to investigate, or we oh, investigated to this. Working. Now, having said that, we however know that Mr. Bisu has been uh, interviewed that's what, by, uh, that's what we, this we are, week. yes, just, just this, this week. week. Mm -hmm. So we don't know whether it's a leak or it's true, uh, and whether it's going to be part of the list. So there's a lot of speculation. Well, his lawyer has spoken, said that they have appeared, so I don't think it's a leak. So it will be in the list, hopefully. I suspect so, <laughs> just like you. <laughs> I, I don't have that information. <laughs> it, it, could, it, it could yeah. be in the, the, yes. uh, the list, yeah. but it should, or it should be in the list. Yes. yes. My concern is that it takes time. You've, you've explained how the budget yes. may not... Now, what happens if at the end of the current administration's term, he hasn't yet, the office, let me not say he, the office of, has not investigated any cases, and then the government changes? Well, there is some amount of independence for the Office of Special Prosecutor. I don't think that government, the new, any new government can just come and say, we're removing you. Okay, without, without, so it's without, like trash. Yes, ten, without, yeah, without, without, without any basis. Okay. Mm. But of course, we've seen cases where, like the Bank of Ghana, where yes. this government came and the, the governor and the deputy governor were told to, to move so that the president would put his own people there. So if another government also comes and says, Madam Media, can you move? We know that the law says this, but we're just going to compensate you. Make an ambassador somewhere. You go. But you know, knowing citizen vigilante, that might not uh, cut it. That might it. not fly. That might not, <laughs> might not, that might that not fly. Might not. But, but they might find other ways. I'm just saying that they could find other ways. Yeah. Otherwise, he's supposed to stay in power, no matter which government is uh, in power, until his tenure expires. Mm. And I don't want to believe that we will end 2020 without him coming out or the office coming out with at least a few, I mean, two or three cases. Well, that would be fantastic. Of course, the first, I, I wouldn't the find first, it fantastic. The first year, I also... I, if the money, something. if they, they recruit some big money, why not? Yeah. If there but be but some money to recruit to the but, state. But, but remember, yeah, President Atomos said, the law grinds slowly. Yes, but it, it works. Does. It does. It's, it's, it's does. slow, but it works. And you see, better. one of the things for, of coming out to announce names mm. is the fact that if you have not done in the, the enough preliminary investigations, and indicted people, and you come out to be announcing certain names. We're in a democracy. People may go to court and say, yeah. look, you are damaging my reputation and all that. No, so, are, so they also need to be a yeah. bit careful. No, we, are not, we don't want him to just throw out the names. Yes, but okay. when there's a, at matter, least, a matter that they are looking into, yes, at least there's a way that, of presenting it without... Yeah. Or even to say that I've received a complaint from it on this and this. Yes. You have not investigated or yes. we were investigating. Mm. 
Yeah. I think that we need to hear that, have that information now. I think that will give a lot of comfort to a lot yes, of citizens. a lot of people. But, but for, for what, what is fact, you know, is that uh, his office was giving a whooping 180 million. Yes. Was PCs. to be given. Please, let's say to be given. Is it was? Or was? Or no, it's, been, he, he said it's in the budget. In the budget, but he may okay. not we have received it. don't know whether it has been released It has not been the best. Are you saying oh, really? that it... He may not have received anything out of that amount. It is possible. Up till now. It is possible. So because we still uh, contend with yes, excuses be, be, of be, be, no because, resources to work with. Because there are procurement procedures. Mm. For example, if you, they acquired a place, an office premise that needed renovation, you have to go through a procurement process. The office doesn't have to pay to go to controller for the payment. If I thought yeah. they do the work, so yeah. it's not like I mean, they're just we, taking the 180 million kind of well, CDs and handing you know, it and handing it over to him. But for we me, why, why do you appoint someone? when the resources are not ready to empower them to do their work. That's I mean, the question. And I feel like this is actually priority. I mean, that's a I question, President. Well, I, I think country. managing our expectations is actually a bigger problem there. Of yes. 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 And, yes. and the government, and the government Managing itself. our expectations yes. is going to be a big one for even the office. Yes. Because the expectations we all have is, you know, something yeah. really... Well, if it doesn't come out anything, that means that there's no corruption. If people oh. don't go and report cases. But we know that there's corruption. <laughs> so so he, has to, come out. Exactly. he has to come out with something. Yeah. And the expectations were raised by this, the government itself. Yes. 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 It oh. was in the, their campaign, uh, the manifesto, yeah. and in the... In the it was actually one of the, the things that in. I was one very excited about. It was one of the biggest things. Yeah. 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 All of us. Yeah. All of and us he, were he excited like about. the symbol, the epitome of that would deliver this kind of uh, I, I know civil society, at the beginning, civil society was saying that let's go through... Uh, a transparent and meritorious approach of appointing the special prosecutor. Mm. But when the name Adamido was it mentioned, was a, everybody just relaxed. Yes, oh, yes, he's yes, the I right person right. to do the I job. I can still remember the euphoria of, yes. you know, you know like everybody was quite excited. So but definitely we're all disappointed. We, we, we will have to cut this short. We're, we're I mean, it's been really interesting. I think we've been educated quite a bit yes. on this subject. And I'm just hoping that everybody will take their time to, you know, find out more and, 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 and stop trying to look for some sort of action Action man, sort of, you know. No, some of from, us we still. Want <laughs> and it's from, particularly, from, from, from my, it's from particularly sad that people in government mm. are even the people raising the questions. Oh well, he is it, is it, is it, is it because so well. he came from a different party? If it was their own person. Well, there I are think, cases uh, about ministers <laughs> that should have resigned. They have resigned. I think that will be a conversation <laughs> for another day. All right, Mr. Azim. Mr. Mr. Vital Azim, it's been so good having you here. Thank you. And um, say hello to the family. It's almost Mother's Day, so. Kids. Yes. Well, like they are in the house. The others are out. All right. So we'll have you here another time. And um, mm -hmm. it's been nice. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
services themselves are beginning to see a much more, mm. you know, higher role for women. And, and it's good that the public mm. is in the public domain and the debates are going on. And we'll see how this would play out mm. as the current one makes a uh, way to exit. Whether it's going to be a woman or whether it's going to be a man. It's going oh, to be interesting, yeah, going be very, interesting very nice. to see how this is going to, mm. to finally uh, work out. Yeah. Any thoughts for the Mother's Day that you want to share? Um, well, of course. I mean, mothers are the greatest anyway. I don't know, the fathers have always complained. So from me to all the mothers, everywhere in the world, it's Happy Mother's Day. And, and also, um, TP3 is actually having a, a Mummies Connect thing on the 12th uh, Sunday, which is Mother's Day um, tomorrow at 12 noon at the forecourt of TV3 at Adesawe and uh, what you have to do to be part of this is you have to share an amazing story of why, you, why your mother is the best mother ever. And uh, don't forget to use the hashtag Mummies Connect on all our social media platforms for an opportunity to give your mom a special invitation to this event. So you have to do this quickly because it's tomorrow at 12 noon and there'll be a lovely buffet here. And uh, if you're part of this, you can bring your mom and then come and have a nice luncheon. So happy Mother's Day to everybody. Well, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day, not only to mothers who have given birth to, but anybody who has taken care of a child, whether related to them by blood, or by uh, any other reason. Mm. And we, we cherish you, we applaud you. It's hard work. It and is. we are all in it together. Mm -hmm. I also like to say Happy Mother's Day to all hardworking Ghanaian women as we celebrate Mothering Sunday. Well, that is all that Captured by Women brings to you today. Make a date with us next week, same time on TV3.